It says encouraging results coming out of COVID-19 vaccine trials have many hopeful. The safety of the shots has some worried. With me now from Bowie, Maryland is Bloomberg Health and FDA reporter Anna Edney, who's reporting on this issue today. Anna, it's great to have you on Quick Take. Why don't we know as much about the safety of, of COVID vaccines? And why won't we know before we get them as we normally do about other vaccines? are being um, hurried through the development process, um, you know, as a lot of um, government officials have said in an entirely appropriate way um, to try to get them out um, fast for to kind of combat this pandemic. But the, um, you know, usually these vaccine trials take a lot longer. So we get to see, we have more time to look and see what kind of um, side effects might pop up especially rare side effects. Um, you might want to see them in a lot more people than are being looked at in these clinical trials right now. You might want to see the vaccine being taken by a lot more people to see if those rare side effects do pop up. And so because, you know, they're kind of weighing this, this um, idea of getting it out faster to people, we're not going to see as much safety data on the vaccine. The Food and Drug Administration has asked for at least two months of safety data, which a lot of side effects tend to pop up by about then. Um, and so that's why they're they're mandating that as the minimum. But, um, you know, there's still going to be a lot of people keeping close eyes on this, trying to see if anything else pops up, which has happened in the past with vaccine rollout. Yeah. Yeah. Take us through the, the history of that, because it's something that you touch on uh, in your story, even though most of the, the of the side effects do show up in a relatively short time period. Yeah, they're um, the probably the one of the more well-known examples um, in healthcare circles is in 1976 when they were um, getting a vaccine out for um, for a, an influenza um, outbreak that happened, and there ended up being a um, a side effect called Guillain-Barré syndrome. It's a really serious um, condition that can cause paralysis, um, and you know it wasn't seen early in the clinical trials. It was something that was signaled and, and showed up later um, during the outbreak, and and so you know they had to they had to do something about that um, to make sure that um, that people you know weren't getting something that was worse than the condition that that they might be trying to prevent. Um, there was an, an outbreak um, of H one N one influenza in two thousand nine. I talked to a lot of experts who worked on that. There weren't any um, you know major side effects like that linked to that that vaccine. So there are examples of, you know, vaccines rolling out without any issues. I wonder, too, just about the length of the studies here. When it comes to studying uh, a vaccine, what is the typical length that these trials take and, and like how long do they take relative to how long companies and, and, and government is going to spend on these? Well, when um, people first started talking about a vaccine for COVID-19, Health experts, um, you know, were were skeptical because they said typically these these vaccine trials can take a decade or or something along those lines, you know, um, to get the whole thing through develop the development process. Um, and so now we're looking at um, a year or so, a little less than a year um, for a lot of these. And you know, they'll the drug makers that are conducting them, they'll um, try to find ways to con continue studying the vaccines once they are on the market. Um, but essentially, you know, a lot of this is going to come from these tracking systems that different health agencies have to try and actually get an idea of um, what's happening with the vaccines once they're actually being used by people. What's different about this vaccine when it comes to the bodies that are regulating not only its development, but the rollout of it, because it's some a conflict that you explore a lot in your piece. That's right. There, um, you know, there are going to be um, different health agencies. There's probably about half a dozen um, tracking safety monitoring systems that are used. They look at, um, you know, claims data from private insurers as well as from some of the federal healthcare systems. Um, like the Veterans Affairs Department, um, Centers for Med Medicare and Medicaid Services, they all um, have different systems. They don't talk to each other. They don't work together to kind of track um, vaccine safety monitoring. And they also, there is a public database. So anyone um, that gets a vaccine could go and report that they think, you know, something, um, some sort of adverse effect happened to them from getting the vaccine. Um, so, you know, they're they're all going to be trying to, to take a look at this. And, 
you know, back when, um, in 2009, when there was the H1N1 outbreak, I talked to some experts who worked on this. And what they did was they had a separate office, um, the National Vaccine Program, that was set up just to look at safety. And so they, you know, had reports in constantly from all of these tracking systems. They monitored them. Um, They tried to assess any signals they might have seen for harmful effects. What's happening this time around is um, you're having a Centers for Disease Control and Prevention panel that is going to be taking all of this on. Um, And that same panel is the panel that is going to recommend who should first get the vaccine, um, who's going to vet this vaccine for efficacy and for safety um, from the start. And so people are are a little concerned that, you know, there's kind of a conflict of interest Mm. there if you are recommending this vaccine um, you know, might the public not trust you quite as much when you say like, you know, oh, we, we saw a safety signal, but don't worry, it's all okay. Yeah, it's a very good point. Bloomberg's Anna Edney joining us from Maryland. Thanks so much for your time, Anna. I appreciate it. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.